Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. This is Dana. We're going to continue on with our paper bag mini album tutorial. Um, I wanted to thank everybody for all the positive feedback on yesterday's video. So many of you contacted me, commented, me, letting me know that you're following along with me and going to make this project. And I'm super excited because I just, there's nothing more than being satisfying than making a project and having people make along with you or make it even afterwards. And they enjoyed it and they created something that they love. And um, that makes me feel really good because crafting is something for me that is very, it's a stress reliever. It's so many things to me. It's a creative outlet and, um, if I can help somebody else achieve that too, well, that's just all the better. <laughs> okay, so we left off, we had made our hinge, okay? So we have our cover and we have our hinge system. So the first thing I wanna do is take my cover before I attach my hinge to it, and I just wanna gently with my bone folder just press ever so slightly into these gaps where our paper has overlaid on the top and bottom. And then I'm gonna run my bone folder on both sides of the chipboard just to help it bend. We don't want our paper to crack. And then I'm gonna just gently bend my cover in. And we don't have any paper tearing, so that's good. And now I'm ready to put my hinge system on. I wanted to give this under layer, this part, the bend in it before I added another layer on top of it that we're gonna have to create that bend. Okay, so I'm gonna just take, and I'm gonna use Fabri-Tac on this part just because um, it's gonna give me a little more time to wiggle it in place. And um, it's also because um, it doesn't dry as fast, it's, I'll be able to kind of mush it into the little grooves of these hinges. I love Art Glitter Glue and I use it for so many things, but Fabri-Tac has its applications as well, where I believe that it just works better and is a better uh, fit for the, just that particular part of a project. And this is one of them. So I'm especially getting kind of in the crease. You can see I'm running my tip right in the crease there. We want this glued down very well because it's literally what's holding our pages. So right in that crease. All right. Do not be shy with the glue on your hinge system. All right. Now I'm gonna turn this this way just because of how I'm sitting. I don't wanna put my head in the camera and I wanna make sure that I'm, I'm probably gonna stand up here. Make sure that I'm centering this. So we have, what I do is there's five hinges here. So the middle one is the third one and I'm gonna line it pretty close up with my seam there. making sure that I'm centered top to bottom. Okay. All right. And now I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm just gonna get good contact everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna go over my hinges, laying the edge of my bone folder on the left-hand side right here, and then switching and laying it on the right side, butting it up against the right side of each hinge. We want to make sure we've got really good contact. Okay. Don't skimp on taking time to make sure that you've really got good contact on this hinge system. It is probably the most important piece of the album, of any album, really. Okay, I'm just gonna turn it up to the side and make sure that I don't have like big gaps in between my hinges here. It looks like that's pretty good. Got a 
a little gap right here between these two. All right. Now I'm just gonna kind of work my hinges. I'm gonna press them all this way, and then I'm gonna press them all the other way. We want them to bend nicely. All right. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm gonna find my crease, and I'm just gonna gently press down into that crease. And as I press it down, I'm gonna start pulling the cover up. Just like that, okay? That looks good. We've got no bubbling. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. First, gonna kind of find my, find my gap. And then as I press in, I'm just gonna lift up. All right, and there we go. I can see that I'm a little off center, but that's okay. I got my hinge systems pulling up a little bit right here, so I'm just gonna reach in with my bone folder and flatten that out. part does not want to lay down. Okay, so there's our cover. Nice. So I'm going to set this aside so it can completely dry. And usually what I like to do is lay something on it to where it just stays nice and flat like this. Oh my gosh, this part of my hinge system does not want to lay down. I'm just going to hold this for a minute. I don't want anything to happen to that. I want that to completely dry in place, not bubbled up. All right. If that's bubbled up when I come back to it, I'll add some more glue in there. Okay, so when I, I was saying, when I lay this aside to dry, what I typically do will just take um, something light. I'm looking around to try and find something here. here. I'll take this packaging of this Tim Holtz wallpaper. And what I do is I just lay it to the side and I just lean this kind of up against it like that. So it'll sit and dry in the closed, kind of, so it's not popping up. You see how it wants to pop up? I don't want it to dry in that position. I want it to dry kind of closed like this. So I'm just gonna put something on it that's gonna keep it from popping up. All right. Okay, so I wanna show you what I did last night. Let me close my Fabri-Tac here. I took my paper bags, and this is just me. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, you know I'm an inker, okay? So I um, I took the liberty of inking all my edges on my bags um, because the paper collection I'm using, I think that it just goes well with that, okay? So let me show you what I'm using. Okay, and this is called Fall Orchard, and I got, by recollections, I got this at Michael's on a hot buy, okay? So it was like six bucks. Um, I love this paper, it's so pretty. And it's, I did a haul video and I flipped through it in there, but let me just give you a quick peek. So what I did last night was I pulled my favorite papers and I started cutting my mats. And, um, I cut all my mats down to size and I inked every one of them, okay? So I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, um, I'll tell you what the mat sizes are as I decorate here and lay them down. And then in the description box below, I will um, list the how many you need of what size mat, okay? So what I'm gonna start with is my biggest mats. Okay, and these go, so let me back up. 
I cut all my mats down to size um, and then I have them in piles, okay? And so I'll decide what papers go where as I begin to glue things down, okay? All right, so I'm gonna start with, I've got my pages, they're all blank now, but I got them kind of in order of how they're gonna lay out, okay? because I need to see what papers are gonna coordinate as I'm putting it together. So right now I'm just gonna randomly take from this pile and I'm just, cause it's the first one we're laying down so it doesn't really matter um, what goes on what page because it's coordinating with nothing right now because it's the first mat. Okay, and these mats measure four and three, quarters by six and three quarters. Okay, so that's gonna lay right there. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it's so pretty. I love this paper collection. And see what I mean how the inked edges go so well? Okay, so then on to the next page. I'll just grab the next mat. I was a little worried yesterday um, because the video was so long and I was worried. I was super happy to get the great feedback um, on the video, um, which helped because I was actually a little bit scared because it was so long um, that people weren't going to like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's impossible to do a tutorial on um something like a mini album and make it short. It's just impossible. There's so many steps and it just takes, it's one of those projects that just takes a while to do. So I'm assuming those of you who are watching just know that and appreciate it and know that the videos are gonna be longer because we're doing a mini album. Okay. There's that one. Isn't that cute with the apples? I'm gonna save this one, I think, for the back page. Again, these are four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And we're putting these on our back side that has no pocket underneath our little flap, photo mat flap. See how well those inked edges go with that? Looks so nice. Okay, got a little bit of glue there. Okay, and the last one. So we have about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Really my rule of thumb when cutting mats is I take the measurement of the thing I'm matting and I just take a quarter of an inch off the measurements. Okay, so now I want to mat my photo mat flaps. These right here, okay? So I'm gonna kind of keep these in view because once I turn this page, I'm gonna coordinate. Well, actually I'm not coordinating because I haven't, I haven't done this page yet, but I am paying attention to what looks best next to this, okay? So let me grab that stack and I've got 10 of these, okay? And these measure four and a quarter by six and a quarter, okay? So I'm gonna kind of lay these out in front of me. I think I cut two each of these. Yeah, I did. Okay. All right, so what do I wanna put next to? And I need to round the corners and ink those corners. I did ink all of these, but I figured um, 
I'm thinking that these green and gold apples would look really pretty next to that. Okay, so I need to, I didn't round the corners because I wasn't sure which page was gonna go here and which page was gonna go here, and that depends on what corner I round, which side of this I'm gonna put it on. So I need to get my corner rounder. Where is it? Here it is. So now that I decided I'm putting this one on this side, I can round these corners over here. And then I'll just take my ink just to that corner. Okay, so we'll lay this down. I think that gold, those gold apples with the dark green looks really pretty next to these red leaves. Okay, and so we just evenly space all the way around as best as we can. That looks pretty. Okay, let's see what we want on the front. How, let's do a plaid. I think that would look really pretty. So let's round this corner here because it's going on that side. pretty. Oh, I like that. I love when the book starts to take shape. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, so let's turn this over. I'm going to set this one aside. Okay, what do we want to put next to this plaid? How about these leaves here? I think that would be really pretty. Okay. So around the correct corner. glue that on. So I hope everybody's doing well today. I'm so glad to have such a positive response to this project. I'm th already thinking of designs to do. I love paper bag albums. Um, I know I said that yesterday, but I'm already kind of thinking of a design to do one with the bags facing in a horizontal direction because this one's vertical. How about, let's, let's do these birdies. That's pretty. So I'm kind of brainstorming ideas for that. And this one will be interesting too because one thing about these paper pads that I bought recently at Michael's was that I was surprised they didn't have any, you know, normally in a paper collection or even a paper pad, you get um, sheets of three by four and four by six cut aparts, which really make stuffing pockets in a mini album easy right? Because you just use those cut aparts. Well, oh, that looks pretty with the plaid. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Um, so I was surprised that the, these paper collections, do I want this on the outside or the inside? Um, I think it doesn't really matter. I think I'm gonna put it on the outside. And then we'll put the green one with the apples on the inside. Um, so anyway, what was I saying? Oh, you. so it makes it easy to stuff pockets in a mini album with things that coordinate because you have the cut aparts to use. Well, the only cut aparts that they really had in this paper collection, this paper pad, um, was six by six cut aparts, which are not gonna fit in this album. Um, we'll see if we can cut any of them down. Um, and they did have kind of the the uh, like banner sheet that's got like the stripes 
Um, so we're going to have to actually, um, this will be a good exercise for us for this mini album because like how do you, what do you do with your mini albums when you don't have, um, when you don't have cut aparts to use. So of course we're going to have to make our own ephemera. Okay. And we will utilize, um, pieces and parts of the paper pad. Um, but it's the fun part. I love making ephemera tags, journaling cards. And um, so we're gonna get to do that with this project um, because there's no um, cut aparts to use really. So we're literally gonna be creating everything in the pockets from scratch. So that'll be fun. I'm thinking with kind of how rustic this looks with the apples and the orchard theme and stuff. Um, that book page ephemera is going to look really pretty. So, um, so I'm already kind of thinking about some things that I want to use. Okay, I think I definitely want this plaid on the front with these gray leaves on the back. So let's do that. Now, when we get to doing the other side, we'll have to think a little bit more and really look at the patterns we have. Because I don't, if I can help it, I don't want to have duplicate um, patterns up next to each other. But for right now, it's pretty easy. Just put down what looks nice. It's when we're coordinating the other side, like this side, with this side that's gonna make the biggest difference. Okay, so I'm thinking, let's use this, because these are gonna look really pretty next to this one, the one that's on the last page. And they all coordinate together, they're from the same paper collection. But, some designs look better together than others. By the time we're done matting all of these, then our, our cover will be dry enough and our hinge system will be dry enough for us to add our pages in and glue our pages in. Okay. That's nice, I like that. That's pretty, pretty, pretty. This paper collection is so nice. Okay, so here's the question, which I think I'm gonna put the bird on the front and then we'll put this on the inside because it's a little bit plainer. I need to empty my, my corner rounder punch. Every time I punch a corner, I've got little bits that fly out the top of it. Okay. There's that one. And again, these are four and a quarter by six and a quarter and you need 10 of these, because we've got five pages and you've got two sides to this flip. All right. This is the last one. I just thought this one would look really pretty with that black behind in the background right here, the red and white. So cute. Okay, so we have our back sides done. So now we're gonna do our front sides. This is where we'll get to glue our pocket down, okay? So I'm gonna leave this one for last because the only thing the first page is gonna sit up against is our front inside cover right here so I don't have anything to really match it to at this point 
So I'm gonna start with the pages that I know I need to coordinate. Okay, so we're gonna map the upper part of the pocket. Okay, and that measures, let me pull these out here. This piece measures four and three quarters by four. Okay, it's gonna go right in here like this. And then once we get it, it's gonna slightly go under the pocket. And once we get it in, then we can glue our pocket down, okay? All right, so four and three quarters by four, and you need five of them, one for each pocket. Now let's decide where we wanna put what. Okay, that is actually kind of pretty right there. I'm gonna run through and just kind of place things. Let's see. I think this would be really pretty here. We've got reds kind of going on here. Okay, see, this is what I was talking about. I don't wanna put this here because it's the same print. So I'm thinking this one right here. And that leaves these two. I think we'll put the apples here and then we'll use the plaid on the front piece. Okay, now that that's decided. Okay, we're just gonna glue these down. We're gonna line up at the top, the top edge, making sure we've got equal spacing as best as we can all the way around these top three edges, the so two sides and the top. Then I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna run a line of glue on the left side of the pocket and the right side of the pocket. And I'm gonna glue my pocket down now. Now when I did my other book, when I did the prototype, I had glued my pocket down first. So I was actually having to peel up part of my pocket in order to mat um, this top area of the pocket. So it was kind of a pain. So this time around I waited and that just worked out much better. Okay, so that's the first page. We'll set that aside. It's fun to see these come together, isn't it? When you start um, when you start making the bases and everything is all one color, you can kind of see how cute it's gonna be because you can see the structure of it. But when you start matting pages and stuff and it starts to come together and you see all that pretty paper laid down, oh, it's my favorite part. I just love it. Left my ink open over there. Okay, so let me glue our pocket down. I was thinking when I was, um, some of the ideas that I was having when I was thinking about making tags and journaling cards for this, I thought, oh, with that pretty little orchard theme they've got going here on this paper, it would be really um, cute to incorporate some like um, burlap into some of the journaling cards and tags. And I think that will be really cute. So I'll probably do that. So we can play a lot with textures of fabric and book page and things like that with our ephemera that's gonna go in the pockets. So I think some burlap would be really cute with this little orchard theme. Do I want that to go like that or like that? I think, I think like this. Okay. 
coming together. Very pretty. All right, last one. shaky today. All right. Okay, let's glue this last pocket down. All right, and then we'll do our lower pocket. The actual pocket. Okay, so let's bring our pages back over. Again, I'm gonna leave this front page for last because I don't have anything to match it against other than what this blank inner thing here. And we are gonna add pockets to our front and ins front inside, um, front and back covers, but that'll come later. Okay, so here's our mats for our pockets. Are these our mats for our pockets? There we go, yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh. Okay, so these measure um, four and three quarters wide by two and seven eighths, okay? Now, it does not bother me that some of the designs are sideways. I was trying to get as much out of my paper as I could of the scraps that I had already cut. Um, so it does not bother me that they're running sideways. If it bothers you, pay attention to your scraps and in what orientation your design is. Because my thought is whoever gets this album, there's going to be pictures over this. You're really not going to be able to tell. So, Or they're going to lay a planer piece of paper over the top so they can journal on it. So, um, all right. So here's the five we have. Move these here so I can see them and turn our page. Okay, and this is gonna go here. Okay, so four and three quarters by two and seven eighths tall. Okay, how about a touch of green here in this area? Let's use our dark green. I think that'll be pretty. Okay, so I think that can go there. That's really pretty too. Um, can't use this, it's a matching pattern. I think I'll use the leaves. That'll be pretty there. Okay, um, I think the plaid will look nice here. Just like that. Okay, and I'm thinking this can go here, which would leave the little birdie print for this front page and actually that looks really pretty right there. Okay, all right, so that's how those are gonna glue in. So let's get these down. Sorry, it's probably not as exciting as yesterday's video, just me kind of gluing down paper. But, you know, it's part of the process and I wanted to be able to um, to show the whole process because there is a thought process that goes into picking your um, picking which pages what which design papers go where um, you have to think about it um, if you don't mind matching patterns um, you know put the same pattern all on one page it doesn't matter it's just my style you know everybody has their own way of doing things so if you don't mind, if there's a, a piece of paper that um, matches, if you wanted to put the plaid on here to kind of tie them together, you can totally do that. In fact, that might actually be a nice idea where you've got three different colored um, pages here, designs here, 
and then you have two matching ones here. That actually might be nice. Maybe we'll do that. I'll have to see what I've got over there that I cut for pockets. And see if there's, if that'll work out. I don't know what I cut for our little flaps. So, um, if you're wondering about how I went about deciding what papers to actually cut out of the paper pad, all I did was I went through um, the paper pad because there are pages in there that I didn't use. Um, all I did was go through the paper pad and I just started pulling out my favorites, the designs that I liked most. And I think I pulled about 10 pages. So I'm um, not sure how many designs are actually in there. Let me see if it says um, 48 sheets, 24 designs. So I used almost half the designs. So there's still half of the designs in there that I didn't even use. And um, which may be kind of nice to use for our, um, for our top loading, um, our top loading pocket here to use some paper that wasn't used on the pages themselves. Oh, these are so nice and they're thickening up and they're getting more sturdy the more layers you, of paper that you add. So they're not like little flimsy bags anymore. They're getting sturdier and sturdier because we're layering paper onto them. Okay. And you can see I probably could have cut another eighth of an inch and made this like um, four and three quarters by three. It's just hard, you know, the, the pages are, when you're measuring one bag, it's not necessarily the measurement on another, but I still think that looks nice, so I'm not gonna stress about it. Okay, so now we're ready to do our mats. Now these are, um, three and three quarters wide by two and a half inches tall. And there's 10 of them because we have two sides to our flap. Okay. So I'm going to spread these out in front of me so I can see what designs I have. Some of them I have two. Oh, these are all singles right here. So I only have two each of these two right there. So let's see if we have any like matching ones. First, I've re noticed right off the bat, I don't have a plaid. Um, let me see if there's any that match. This one matches. Let me see if I like that. Eh, I think I'm going to mix it up. I don't like the matchy matchy. Okay. So what do we want to put on the front of this one? We've got one, two, three, four things to consider. This one, I don't really care about. Do you see how this one matches? I don't really care about that because you don't see it when you open the page up. I wonder if these plaids would clash. Actually, I kind of like it. Okay, so these are ones that are gonna have to have their corners rounded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the front of the flap and then I'll come back and do the underside of it because I don't really care what the pattern is that goes there because you're not gonna see it when you open the page. You'll only see it when you flip this part up. So I'm not as concerned about matching patterns there. So we'll get the front part, the part that shows right off the bat covered first. And then I'll come back and do the underside. Okay, getting glue everywhere. My hands are very shaky. Okay, I like that. Some people don't like clashing plaids. I don't mind them. Plaids are some of my favorite designs. Okay, let's see. Um, let's do, oh, let's do this dark green here. Because I think that's going to look really pretty with the leaves. So a little bit of a thought process, but that's okay. As with anything that you create. Okay, oh, that's pretty. I like this page. 
Ooh, this one's really pretty too. They're all pretty. What, who am I kidding? I think the leaf's gonna look really pretty right here. I think those inked edges look really pretty with this style, just with the orchard and some pages feel rustic. This one feels a little more fancy because of the gold and I just love that mixture. I really do. It's very pretty. Okay. Um, yeah. Sometimes I don't get my corner punch lined up good enough. I end up with this really wonky looking corner. I have to re-punch it. Really need to clean that out. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is the last one for the front side. So pretty. So, so pretty. Okay, so now we'll come back and do the undersides. I've got five pieces left here. Um, oh no, I need to do this one. Let's see, how about, how about the apples? Let's put the apples on there. I was seeing we have five pieces left and I looked and there were six and I'm like, six? Oh yeah, I didn't do the front page. There we go. Lay that in there. Really cute. Okay, so let's do the underside. I think I'm gonna put the leaves on the other side. I wonder how the matching would look right here. No, I don't like it. Okay, so now we're gonna round the top corners because this is the underside. Okay, pretty. That page is done, front and back. Okay, let's use one of these. Oh, that looks pretty. And look at it all together. Isn't that pretty? Pretty, pretty. Okay. Underside here. I could do the plaid. The plaid's over here. It's on the underside here. I don't mind that. Let's do it. Because you don't really see it that much. It's just kind of on the, uh, on the underside of that photo mat flap. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. Because you only see a little bit of it over here. All right. Getting there. Okay, definitely gonna use this one here. Oops. Put it right side up. And our last piece is gonna be these red apples little red apple print. Oh no, look, it's gonna match right here. Oh well, it is what it is. 
So we ended up with one little matching piece in the end, but that's okay. Maybe we'll put um, a little, uh, maybe we'll embellish that so you can't see the, the matching paper as much. So we'll do something to kind of disguise this because I just don't like how it's real matchy matchy. So I'll do something to disguise this. Um, I'll embellish it some. Okay, all right, so what we are ready for now is to put these in the book, into on our hinges. Okay, let me clear off things here. And I have my pages in the order that I like them. Okay, so now we'll bring our cover back in. Look at all these little trimmings, corner, corner chomper trimmings. I need a new mat. This mat is disgusting. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up flat. Okay, I'm gonna kind of bend it a little so that it's flat. And what I do is I start with the back page and I work my way forward, turning my book to its side. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my pile over because this is my back page. And I wanna dry fit this first, okay? So I'm gonna set it on top of my hinge, putting my hinge in this gusset right here. And I just wanna make sure that everything fits. Okay. Hmm. There we go. I was like, it's not covering the hinge up and it's because there was some glue got under there. Okay, all right. So now, when we go to glue our hinge in, I'm gonna stand up and get closer to the camera so you can see. When we glue our hinge in, we do not want to cross our score line right here, okay? We're gonna put, put it down to where it just kind of meets up to the score line but doesn't cross it, okay? Because if we cross that score line, our page will not open and lay flat. Okay, see how nicely my pages lay down? See how nicely flat they lay when my book is open? And it's because I didn't cross the score line. If you look very closely at my pages, see how they just don't sit? They sit just outside, oops, bumped you, sorry. They sit just outside of the score line, okay? That's what's gonna enable your book to lay nice and flat, okay? So let me put my pages to the side here. So what I'm gonna do, again, if you're a score tape user, use score tape, okay? I'm just gonna use glue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place glue on one side of my hinge, not getting it on my score line, just to the top of it. And then I'm just gonna slightly bend this hinge over a little bit so that I can get the other side. Now I found the easiest way for me to do this is I turn it sideways like this at myself and I take my page and I've dry fit it so I know where it goes and I'm just gonna put this in here and I'm gonna lay it as close to the score line as I can get it without touching it, okay? And I'm just gonna press, okay? Now these are paper bags that you're adhering, so they're gonna catch pretty quickly. It's not like you're gluing cardstock to cardstock. You're gluing a paper bag to cardstock, so it's gonna catch fairly quickly if you're using like reptile glue or art glitter glue. And there we go, and see, it lays perfectly flat, okay? And that's all we're gonna do. Now I'm gonna put glue on my next hinge. Actually, let me dry fit my page because I did have some glue seepage on that one. And see, this is why we dry fit, okay? When I glued my pocket down, you see how some glue caught here. So I wanna run my finger down here and kind of separate that bag. I wanna make sure that it's open from top to bottom, okay? So I'm glad that I looked at that. So look at those each time so you can make sure that your bag is gonna slip on your hinge the right way, okay? So I'm just gonna run glue on this side. And 
and then pull that back slightly so I can get glue on this side. All right, and I'm gonna turn it around. Slip my page on, get it into position, and press down. Okay, perfect. Laying nice and flat. Okay, let me like take a look at my next page. Make sure. Oh, see, it looks like I've been getting some glue here in the bottom. So I'm just gonna stick my finger in there and gently open it all the way. Okay. Get my glue on my hinge. side. 